Welcome to this video on metallic bonding. This video is suitable for GCSE students. By the end of this video lesson, you should be able to describe typical physical properties of metals and be able to link these to the uses of some common metals. In addition to this, you should be able to explain the bonding that exists in metals and be able to use the metallic bonding model to explain why metals have these physical properties. A good starting point is for us to look at the periodic table. The periodic table is a list of elements in order of atomic number. Metals are found on the left hand side of this table and non-metals to the right hand side. The only exception is hydrogen. In between the metals and non-metals we have metalloids which have intermediate properties between metals and non-metals. Now let's look at typical properties of metals on non-metals. It's important to get the most out of this video that you understand these typical properties because we're going to explain these properties later using the metallic bonding model. So key properties you should know about metals are that they conduct electricity, they conduct heat, they have high melting points, they are malleable, which means we can hammer them into different shapes, and they're ductile, which means they can be drawn into wires. Non-metals tend to have the opposite properties. They're insulators, they don't conduct electricity, they don't conduct heat, they're low melting points, not malleable and not ductile. To help us understand why metals have these properties, we need to look closely at the bonding that exists in metals. Metals have metallic bonding. In metallic bonding, we have positive metal ions surrounded by what we call a sea of electrons. The attraction between the electrons and the positive metal ions is called a metallic bond. And we can explain every property that a metal has using this very simple model. So now let's look at the metallic bonding model in a little more detail. And we're going to use it to explain some of the properties. So I'm currently drawing a model to show the bonding in sodium. And sodium is a group one element, so it forms one plus ions. And every one plus ion that I form, I lose one electron. And the electrons are going in between the ions in this diagram. And the electrons are able to move about. And we say that they're able to spread over the whole structure. And we use the word delocalization. They're delocalized electrons. And we can use this model to explain the properties. For example, uh, metals conduct electricity and heat. And the reason for this is because they have this sea of electrons, these delocalized electrons. I'm now going to look at some of the other properties by looking at magnesium. Magnesium is a group two element. So when magnesium forms an ion, it forms a two plus charge. For every magnesium ion that I form, I lose two electrons. So you'll notice I'm drawing two electrons every time I form a magnesium ion. So in the case of magnesium, we have more delocalized electrons. Now the electrons are like the glue holding the whole structure together. So the more electrons that you have, the more glue you have, the stronger the forces and the bonding holding the metal together. Now metals in general have quite high melting points, but magnesium has a significantly higher melting point than sodium because we've got a greater charge on the iron and more delocalized electrons. So the bonding in magnesium is much stronger than in sodium. So if we now take this a little bit further and look at aluminium, aluminium is a group three element. Aluminium forms three plus ions and for every ion that we form, we lose three electrons. So we now have more delocalized electrons. So there's more glue holding the structure together. The structure has stronger metallic bonds because remember metallic bonding is the attraction between the ions and the delocalized electrons. So the metallic bonding is a lot stronger in aluminium and hence it's got a higher melting point. 
and it's also going to be a harder metal than say sodium. Aluminium is also very malleable and metals tend to be malleable because the ions can slide over each other. So now let's test our understanding of metallic bonding by looking at some exam questions. In these exam questions you're going to have to use the metallic bonding model to explain some of the properties of typical metals and also why these metals have certain uses. So now we'd like you to pause the video and have a go at the examination style questions. This first question is asking you what the term malleable means and it's asking you then to describe the bonding in aluminium and with reference to the bond and explain why aluminium is malleable. And then finally it's asking you to list two other uses of aluminium apart from in drinks cans. So let's see how we got on with the first question. So the first part of the question is asking what the term malleable means. Now to get the one mark for this, you need to say that malleable means it can be pressed, hammered or bent into different shapes. The examiner will not accept molded. Now let's look at parts B and C. So for part B, you're asked to describe the bonding in aluminium and explain why it's malleable. So Aluminium is made up of a giant structure of positive ions, Al3 plus ions. You get one mark for saying that. If you then went on to say that these ions are surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons, you get a second mark. If you explain that a metallic bond is the attraction between the ions and the delocalized electrons, you get the third mark. And for the fourth mark, you need to explain that aluminium is malleable because the ions are able to slide over each other. Now for part C, you're asked to list two other uses of aluminium. So these could include high voltage power lines, aeroplanes, uh, foil for wrapping food, saucepans, etc. And you get one mark for each use. Now pause the video again and have a go at question two. Question two is looking at copper and it's asking you to describe the structure and bonding in a metal and then it's asking you to explain why copper conducts electricity and then it's asking you to explain why copper is ductile, why it can be drawn into wires. So now we're going to go through the answers to question two. So for the first part of the question, 2a, you're asked to describe the structure and bonding in a metal. So this is a three mark question. You get one mark for saying that metals are made up of a giant structure of positive ions. You get the second mark for saying that um, these ions are surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons. And the final mark here is for saying that the attraction between the ions and the delocalized electrons is called a metallic bond. So for question 2b, you're asked to explain using a bonding model why copper conducts electricity. So you get your mark for this if you discuss the fact that it has free electrons or electrons are able to move or mobile electrons or the term delocalized electrons and then for part c you're asked to explain why copper is ductile and all you have to say is that the ions are able to slide or slip or move over each other now we'd like you to pause the video again and have a go at this question so you're given a table of melting points and we want you to explain why magnesium has a higher melting point than sodium. And then we want you to explain, um, with reference to bonding, whether you think aluminium's melting point would be higher or lower. So now let's look how you got on with that question. So for the first part, we want you to explain that magnesium has a higher melting point because there's a greater charge on the magnesium ion. It's two plus compared to sodium's one plus. And therefore, there are more delocalized electrons and stronger metallic bonding. So you would get, if you mention that there are more delocalized electrons, you would get a mark. And if you talked about the strong metallic bonding, you get the second mark. So for the final part of this question, you're asked whether aluminium would have a higher or lower melting point. So if you say higher, you get one mark for that. 
And the reason that it would be higher is there's a greater charge on the aluminium ion compared to the magnesium ion. And because of that, there are more delocalized electrons and stronger metallic bonding. Remember, the delocalized electrons are like the glue holding the structure together. So now let's remind ourselves of the lesson objectives. You should now be able to describe typical physical properties of metals and be able to link these to the uses of some common metals. You should also be able to explain the bonding that exists in metals and be able to use the metallic bonding model to explain why metals have these physical properties. So that concludes our video. Please check out our YouTube channel, Dr. O Chemistry, and our Twitter site, which contains lots of chemistry information and links, at Radar Chemistry.